Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tommy and welcome to a rather unorthodox video from me. This is finally my take on five tips for building sandbox enclosures. And I actually want to thank for this idea to JD Atkin from the Jurassic World Evolution 2 Facebook group. So I don't know if you ever hear this buddy, but this video is dedicated to you because I don't know how, but in those four months that I've been doing this, on YouTube it never occurred to me to do like a five building tips video and I don't know why but you asked me what are my like top three tips so I told you plus now I will tell you all what my top five building tips are so this will be ranked on the matter of importance to me so we'll be starting with number five and we'll make our way all the way down to number one so at number five my rule number five is no similar enclosures. Make sure whenever you build a sandbox park and you want it to look nice, you want it to look good to distinguish the enclosures from each other. Even if it's just, you know, like using a different kind of tree, using a different rock texture, using a, a river instead of a lake, for example, or using two lakes. <laughs> I mean, there are countless possibilities in several of the biomes. As I found out, the best biome for creating different enclosures from each other, like different enough, is the alpine biome or taiga biome. It has its limitations, but I have started a series of videos called One Biome, Six Different Enclosures, and we already have an alpine one and a tempered one. So you can check those out to kind of like get an idea of what you can do differently put in different rocks put the rocks in different formations you can always do something different to not get bored as you go along speaking of rocks <laughs> some of you would think that this would be higher but we we have more important issues and more important matters but my tip number four rocks are essential rocks are essential rocks are the alpha and omega of not only enclosures but also the guest sections, especially the parts of the guest sections where they're supposed to be like nature-y and you know, like stuff. <laughs> I always put so many decoration items and I sometimes forget that I can also use rocks in the guest sections, especially when you have, for example, a small circle of nature in the middle of a square, you use rocks, you use trees, but rocks are the best thing when it comes to the enclosures because you can also create enclosure borders with rocks when many people don't know you can actually use the rocks as barriers instead of fences to make the enclosure look different make it look more natural I based my whole Germany park on this I've just premiered the park like three weeks ago two weeks ago was but I'm not really sure right now <laughs> but uh, you should be seeing some scenes from the Germany park here because the rocks really can help you do the enclosure justice and bring some much needed realism and as I always say start with the big rocks and then put in the middle rocks like around them but not evenly <laughs> that's not realistic and then the smallest rock so that it looks like it was a part of a bigger rock formation and chunks of the rocks fell off and now we're just like laying around in the grass somewhere my tip number three I already mentioned decoration items there is never too much decoration Never. You can never go wrong with one more planter, one more sign, one more fountain, one more anything. So basically what you want to do, you can see this in my Atlantis speed build series that I am simply overusing these decoration items because now we have quite the variety that we have always been asking for in this game we finally have it so why not use it make sure to decorate your paths with the planters with the fountains to line up the paths with the planters i know it's a lot of work it's not like you have it finished in five minutes but if you want to create these squares with intricate path work that's my bonus tip <laughs> do intricate path work 
And now that I think about it, it should have gotten here, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Paths can be decorative, de de decorative, Decor decorative, whatever the pronunciation is, I'm sorry. And as I said, it's never too much. You can never go wrong with it. So use the decoration items. We finally have them, so make use of them. My tip number two is play with the elevation. This is absolutely uh, one of the most important things about building nice enclosures that many times people like completely forget. And you can do so much with just simply creating a plateau somewhere or creating a vista, an overview, creating valleys, creating pits, dips, hills. Bus, club, another club, another club, plane. You get the gist, right? So you can do really much with just raising a part of the enclosure. Just a few examples would be my T-Rex Valley. I did a tutorial on that or the Cascades where the cascading pools are basically just a few spots on the map where the elevation is different and you put water in it and bam, it's a whole another level. It can really do wonders when you put viewing gallery, for example, up on the hill where the guests have an elevated position and dinosaurs are down there and you can always see them and it can create these magnificent views and magnificent pictures as well. <laughs> I mean, the best pictures are from up above, right? So the elevation really is important and people often forget. Also, when it comes to the things, this should have been like more tips than five because now I'm thinking of more. <laughs> so tip number one and a half <laughs> is to play with the textures. Play with more textures. It's the same as it is with elevation. People do forget to play with the textures. We have more types of grass. We have more types of sand, rock and dirt. Make use of it. Be different. This goes in to the no similar enclosures rule and this <laughs> video is getting messy so let me just get to my final point the number one tip that you will hear from me and this is a big one because it's it's not controversial but it's just my final tip is for the love of the t-rex ignore the guest needs please do the guest needs will ruin a perfect blueprint for your park because the guests are never happy. They always want their transport, they want their food, they want their souvenirs, they want this and they want that and they want to go to pee. As if dinosaurs, living, breathing dinosaurs weren't enough, you need to have a freaking souvenir shop near you at every single freaking moment. So ignore the rules of the game in general. By the way, I should have said it in the beginning that this goes for the sandbox park only because I can't imagine applying this rule in the challenge mode but once you stop caring about what the guests want what the guests need you start creating the enclosures and the parks the way that you want it because trying to put every single kind of shop and a bathroom and transportation to every single corner where the guests need it it takes up space and the space is valuable in this game. Once you stop caring about these things, the parks will get more according to how you imagine them, how you want to create them. Same goes for having to have viewing galleries everywhere. Screw the viewing galleries. Oh, sorry, that might have been too harsh. But yeah, I'm right. The guests should be able to see the dinosaurs from the freaking path right? So we don't really need the viewing galleries. If you, for example, do an elevated path and you do an enclosure like under it, you can put in the planters, you can put in the rocks, create nice enclosure that is very natural, like no fence, you have natural barriers and you have no viewing gallery there. And it actually looks like a park. <laughs> it doesn't look like what the game is telling you it is supposed to look like. So that would be my number one tip. Ignore the guests whining. They will always whine about something and ignore the rules of the game. Just break the rules. And if you break the rules, you get much better results and you have more creative freedom. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this video. Thank you for listening to my five tips. It was basically seven or eight, but who's counting, right? 
So I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a like, comment or share. And if you think that you could like my content and you have not subscribed yet, please do consider doing so because I have more tutorials coming, more park tours coming, more scenic views videos coming and generally a lot of stuff. So I will be glad to see you here again and till the next time, have a great day and thank you very much. Bye bye.